Now then, International Women's Day is all about celebrating those who have broken boundaries and gone on to do incredible things. Well, today we're joined by someone who is truly inspirational. Despite being diagnosed with a rare disease at the age of 15, Chloe Hammond never gave up and has gone on to become one of the UK's only disabled nurses. Well, after Chloe was nominated by her mum, Jackie, to be our extraordinary woman of the day, <laughs> uh, they're both joining us here in the studio. Welcome. That was such a fun surprise <laughs> to lovely. do. Just love that. Because you are a big fan of the show, aren't such you? Such a fan of the show. <laughs> I don't think I've missed one yet. <laughs> so, and, and here you are in here. It's weird. It's so strange to be here like, with you guys. Oh, well, we love, we love having you here and we have your mum to thank for that because you got in touch with us and you nominated her. Why did you want to nominate her? Um, because she calls it mushy. And so I'm not allowed to tell her how I actually feel about her. Um, and it makes me well up and that's embarrassing for her. Well, don't be embarrassed. <laughs> but this is something that sums up everything about how incredible she is. Well, you, you have full permission to be mushy. Yes, now, you do. You can't grumble or complain. <laughs> this is celebrating you, so allow yourself to be celebrated. Now tell us why. <laughs> she... Um, has had so many setbacks in life, physically, emotionally, the traumas of being not invited to do things when she's applied to do things just because of her disabilities, her circumstances, whatever, whether that's in work, in education, mm -hmm. in life. Um, and she always goes, OK. And she doesn't give up. She looks for a way that works for everybody else as well. So her way of dealing with every setback is, I totally understand where they're coming from. However, I still really want to do that. So I'm going to find a way that doesn't mess with systems yeah. and whatever. Um, and... Here she is, here she is. fully and nursing and everything. <laughs> and, and it's that determination that sort of stands you out from anybody else, and that's why we chose you today. You, um, up, and, up until about the age of 15, I mean, you're, you were a, a British champion ballroom <laughs> dancer, you competed in trampolining at a national level, so you were very active as a teenager. Very active. And then everything changed, didn't it? Yeah, so I think it probably changed because I stopped doing those things. Right. So I went to uni to do a nursing degree and that took up most of my time. Um, probably more time than I even had. Yeah. And it meant everything that, like, the trampolining and the dancing kind of just fell away a bit while I focused on that. And then the less I used the muscles, the less <clears throat> good they were. It was going to happen. Yeah, I think so. Like, I think <clears throat> it, it's probably been there forever, but where I was so active, it wasn't really as noticeable. It's hiding it. Well, yeah. you were diagnosed with um, Bechette's. Uh, since then, you've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, Raynaud's, also hypermobile, um, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Um, so you sort of these these creeping challenges, which which constantly were there to to trip you up. And you went through. You mentioned uni. You went through uni, um, hiding it really, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't want to get turned down for my nursing degree because it's what I really wanted to do and I didn't think it mattered. Like, I was just really worried that people had already said maybe it wasn't the career for me, so when I actually went to university interviews and stuff, I just didn't say. Yeah, I could understand that. And you... I mean, the good news is, is that you, you graduated. Uh, yeah. You went to Chelsea and Westminster Hospital for a year. You were in the children's department there, so yeah. that's all fantastic. And then th things progressed slightly yeah. and you health isn't in such a great place and things are becoming more difficult and you do um, have to move away from that. For a while, you got a, an admin job, didn't you? <laughs> you and that, did. that was not the job for you. It's not for me at all. No. I'm a nurse. Like, I trained to be a nurse. I don't want to sit behind a desk. So then what did you decide to do? So I decided I wanted to get back into supporting people and I didn't really know how to do it. I'd kind of been told I couldn't be a nurse anymore, so I didn't really know what to do. And I applied to be an activities coordinator in a care home because that mm -hmm. sounded like a great job, like arranging outings and trips and stuff. And I went and met the manager and she was like, why are you even applying for this? You're a nurse. And I was like, well, I can't do nursing. I've got a wheelchair now, like, it doesn't work. And she was like, of course you can. So I went off and did a different job for nearly a year and then she got in touch and she was like, right, are you ready to be a nurse at my care home now? And I was like, OK, sure. Isn't it amazing the difference that someone like that can yeah, make? Yeah, definitely. To your outlook and your... Yeah. And so where are you now? What is life like now? Um, so I am currently, we think, the only nurse that's actively nursing with a wheelchair and an assistance dog. 
Well, let's talk about Archer, shall we? Because <laughs> uh, a very, very special dog down here. This is an assistance dog that you took the decision to finance yourself because you wanted to progress it quicker than if you'd have had to wait. I was on a waiting list for about three and a half years. Yeah. Um, like, I knew what they did and I knew how much they could help and... I just didn't really understand how long the waiting list was, and then COVID hit, and all the waiting lists went even longer. Uh -huh. um, so I had to shield because of all my illnesses, and it was so hard just being locked away, literally a one-bedroom flat by myself. And so my goal through that was to save enough money to buy a house to get a dog. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as soon as I did it, the week I moved into my house, I contacted a breeder. Uh, the week after, he came home. So well, that he's, was... <laughs> uh, I mean, he's remarkable. I love the fact you, you were surprised that we knew his name this morning. <laughs> Um, I thought absolutely... maybe you followed him on Instagram. <laughs> well, we will now. Well, definitely will. Um, I, 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 if you are wondering what the noise is, uh, he is loving this bone <laughs> down here. That's the that's the noise that you uh, you can hear. Um, he is amazing. He, he is. transforms your life. It is expensive. It is expensive. So because we've gone down the route of buying a dog. Um, especially while all the prices were high in COVID, just him as an eight-week-old puppy was two and a half thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. um, and then we estimate it costs roughly five thousand a year to like maintain everything. So all the vet fees and the training and just everything like grooming this, this stuff. All of your money, pretty much. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I would do anything for him, though. Yeah. <laughs> like he would do anything for me. I would do anything for him. Um, well. He's very special, you're very special, Thank you. and we've got um, a clip here from somebody who just wanted to say how special you are, and you might recognise this person because this is somebody who you work with. Hi, Chloe. Aren't you supposed to be in work today? Well, not today. Today's a special day. It's International Women's Day, and I've chosen to honour you, Chloe, for all you do for us here at Radis. You're an amazing nurse. You, uh, you go about your day with your specialist dog in a wheelchair, making a difference in other people's lives. We appreciate all you do for us. Happy International Women's Day, Chloe, and all the women out there. Um, that must be nice. Oh, hang on a second. You may, because well, you're a big fan of the show, you might think, well, where do they always keep the dishes? <laughs> this is how you know. One minute. Thank you. Nice to hear. You're so nice to hear. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, that's not all. We've got a couple of other things for you, um, which actually are in this envelope behind me here, uh, because um, we're going to send you for a full-on spa day at uh, Champneys. You can both go, obviously, and have <laughs> and be pampered, which you truly deserve. Um, and possibly the thing that might help the most is that we are going to, as a show, sponsor Ocho for a year and pay your £5,000 bills for Ocho for... Thank them. you so much. For you are so, so welcome. Oh You're so welcome. Thank you. We think you're amazing. We really do. <laughs> and, Mum, well done you as well oh for getting goodness. in touch and, and nominating her. Thank you so much. I'll come over and hug, but I don't want to see you. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you. Well done. Can and I you... just say before we finish that um, he's with Dog Aid, a charity, <laughs> and they're currently looking for more trainers. So if anyone wants to volunteer as a trainer and make more dogs like him, like that would be amazing. And you're amazing. Would be a great work job continues. as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put details out on our app. And actually, don't go away because I think we're also going to transform you into one of our catwalk models later on, if that's all right. Do you fancy having me while your clothes done? And... Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, you look beautiful in your sparkly top, I've got to say. That was so lucky you had your glitter on today. But we'll see you in a bit, OK? For Thank you.